This is a shout out to an atheist guy named Rob Lester. He's been persecuted by the so-called psychics. They tried to DCMA some of his videos showing up the psychics for the frauds that they are, particularly one in the UK. And he was able to defeat the claim against them, so he was able to keep his videos on YouTube. And the reason why I think that the Christians should be paying a lot of attention to his videos, in particular this series he's doing on uh, psychic frauds, is that there are a lot of Christian frauds. And I think we Christians are being a little too nice about them. Now, the Christian, you know, doctrine is kind of a dilemma. On the one hand, you're supposed to rebuke. On the other hand, you're supposed to be nice. How do you tell the difference when you call somebody out? And when are you supposed to be nice to them? And that's really something you've got to determine with God. But that's the difficulty of the situation. Wait a minute, i got to turn down the fan. It's really hot here, and um, I need to make sure that you can hear me, but I don't want everything to be too loud. Hold on. I'm not playing his video live because I want you to look at it. Link will be in the video description. What he covers, and what we should cover more as Christians, is the fact that there are a lot of frauds who are claiming visions or insight. In the so-called psychic realm, you've got some who claim that, you know, the, a connection to God, but others that claim that just the hereafter, and they're getting their news from the spirits. You've got the Luciferians who are claiming to be getting their information from a channeled spirit named Tot, and um, Tot. And you can get some information on that from Labarum 312. And... You know, Rob is coming from the, the standpoint of, hi, these people are psych claim to be psychics and they're frauds. And his background is in New Age, so he's got a particular exposure to the topic that gives his views a lot of relevance. And he's, he's a really bright guy. I really like him. Anyway, I'm taking his point of view, which I think you should subscribe to him and listen to these episodes he's doing because there is a parallel in Christianity that has been the bane of Christianity from the beginning, which is a claim of dreams or visions from God by people post-canon. Canon very specifically tells you in Hebrews 1, for example, that there is not going to be any valid dream or vision. And if some Christian is claiming one, he's a liar. He's a fraud. So my question to you is, how different is that from the kind of, you know, expose this guy here on screen is doing? There's not very much. Okay? There are two sides of a coin. And if you look into your Old Testament, you'll notice that the death penalty was given to anybody in Israel claiming to speak for God who didn't. Anybody claiming to have a dream or vision or talking to the dead. There was a death penalty assigned to it. And the biggest reason there was a death penalty assigned to it is that people put so much credence in, you know, the whole dream vision claim. And, of course, in the Old Testament, the big problem was, well, how do you tell if somebody's really speaking for God or not? Because we didn't have canon to compare it to. All right? And, you know, there are a number of things in the Old Testament that God talks about where he says, hi, you know, if, if what the guy says doesn't come true, then you know he didn't speak for me. And to, the, to us moderns, that sounds like a really kind of funky standard. Because what if it comes true, but it still isn't from God, number one. Number two, um, if it doesn't come true, well, you, you waited too long. You know what I'm saying? And that, that particular issue is in Jeremiah, because Jeremiah was disputed as being from God. And there were a lot of fake guys running around the kings who were advising the kings who were claiming dreams and visions. And that's the point I want to get at. In the Old Testament times, 
these kinds of frauds, these psychics, they, they didn't call themselves psychics then, they called themselves seers, they called themselves men of God, they called themselves by a lot of names. They helped rulers rule cities, which, you know, in the Bible they call countries, okay? They ruled city-states, and in some cases ruled empires, okay? You see the example in Exodus, where you have all those seers helping the Pharaoh. You have the example in Nebuchadnezzar's time. I mean, to most Christians, what I'm saying ought to be somewhat familiar. So now I want to get to the point. When somebody in Christianity, and there are way too many of them, claims a dream or a vision, right away your red flag ought to go up and say, you know what, this person is a fraud. Okay, just akin to the whole psychic fraud thing. I don't see much difference, except the psychics are, you know, appealing to certain individuals for money. But in a way, so do these Christian frauds appeal to you, and really what they want is your money. All right, now maybe they don't even know they're frauds. Maybe they think, you know, oh, well, I really got a dream or vision from God. Well, even in the Old Testament, they warned about that. There were two kinds of frauds, and there were two kinds of frauds in the Old Testament, and even so today. Either they're faking it to try to get your money, or, you know, notoriety or whatever, eventually money. Or two, they're demon possessed or demon influenced. Now, no atheist is going to believe in that. But as Christians, we do. So that's why the death penalty was assigned in the Old Testament. And that's why we are commanded to avoid these people in the New Testament. We have a Bible. Whatever somebody says, you have to compare it to Scripture to know if it's from God or not. That's the standard now. That's the end of 1 Corinthians 13, and that's the theme of Hebrews 1. So now you got to start asking yourself some really hard and uncomfortable questions. Most of today's Christian denominations are sourced in the past, whether it's 100 years ago or 2,000 years ago. Almost all of them, almost all of them are based on some kind of dream or vision claim of the leader of that sect. And it starts with Catholicism. Now, you're typical, you got two kinds of Catholics too. You got the ignorant Catholic and you got the cognizant Catholic. The cognizant Catholic won't badmouth the dream, vision, past of the church fathers and all their many fake stories and claims. But on the other hand, he won't promote it either. Whereas among the hoi polloi, you've got all kinds of little miracles, even as stupid as, you know, on an underpass of a Chicago freeway, there was a sort of flowy water stain, and everybody thought it was the appearance of the Virgin Mary. Nobody stopped to ask if it was appropriate for the Virgin Mary to appear underneath a Chicago underpass as a flowing water stain. The brains were totally off. Well, that's what psychics depend on. And that's what this guy, Rob Lester, is exposing. That's why I recommend you listen to him. And as you listen to him, okay, start asking yourself questions about the parallels in Christianity to what he's exposing amongst, as it were, secular, non-religious specific psychics. And ask yourself how many, notice how many of what passes for Christian visions today is really no different from the psychic nonsense. That's really all I wanted to say, is the parallels are many, and if you belong to one of these sects, like JWs or SDAs or King James Onlyism, all of those are founded on visions. Catholicism is too. So you have to start asking yourself, well then, how much do I want to trust what these denominations say, since they're based on claims that are just as fraudulent or stupid as um, this whole psychic stuff, which we as Christians generally laugh at. Okay, that was the point. Examine the parallels between what this guy's episodes cover and what's going on in Christianity. And then start asking yourself a question, what kind of interpretation do you belong to 
And is that interpretation right? And again, I say all this because my channel is devoted to auditing. Peace out.